All right guys, we are back in my garage for another video and today we're going to talk about injector failures. But this time it's gonna be kind of indirect. If you guys have watched some of my previous videos, you'll know I've talked about injector failures before and I've mentioned I think it's kind of blown out of proportion and just doesn't really make sense to me. And I was talking to one of my friends about injectors as I'm sure you all do in your free time as well. And we were just discussing how it's weird that on the B-58 there's this idea that your injector fails and your engine just blows up. It happens out of nowhere, it's unpredictable, and there's nothing that you can do about it. And I just, I know I've had injector failures on other platforms, I've seen people have injector failures across the board, and it's never been like that. So what is unique about the B-58 that creates that scenario? And he mentioned that, you know, to be honest, it seems more like LSPI. And I just realized, like, I had never made that association. And I think one of you guys have even commented on one of my videos that I really need to talk about LSPI because B-58 owners aren't considering that that's a big problem on our engines. And I still didn't quite make the association. But if you guys Google LSPI and look up some of the pictures like this and like this and like this, and you see these cracked pistons with broken ringlands, you realize that actually does look exactly like what some B-58 owners have experienced. And so I think this is a topic that we can definitely talk about because it's something a little more tangible, something that's a little more widespread and just an overarching idea of LSPI that OEM manufacturers have been trying to address for years now. And so this is a great time to talk about it. Definitely could be a contributing factor to some people that have B-58 failures. And the good news is there are ways that you can avoid having this issue. So we're gonna talk about that in this video and hopefully you guys find it useful. Now, as always, for everybody that's new to the channel, I create these videos to help keep you updated on the latest developments in our community, as well as discuss technical topics so that we have a better understanding of how our engines work. So if you're interested in more videos like that, be sure to subscribe because there will be a lot more coming out in the future. So LSPI is an acronym. It stands for Low Speed Pre-Ignition. And this is kind of a phenomenon that OEM manufacturers have been chasing, like I said, for the past several years, simply because we're starting to experience this more and more as we see emissions and efficiency standards becoming more stringent. So that requires OEM manufacturers moving to smaller engines. And in order to preserve the expected horsepower and torque that their customers want, they're adding turbos. And it seems like these really small engines with small turbos that give you instantaneous torque and a lot of power down low are creating this issue primarily. Now, even on bigger engines, you can experience it as well. You know, if you've got a three liter engine like the B58 that makes peak torque on the stock turbo at 1900 RPM, that's not something that you would typically experience on an older naturally aspirated or even an older turbo engine. But as cars are becoming more efficient, you know, we've got direct injection and high compression engines and all of these things that give you as much power and efficiency as possible, you're starting to experience this issue more. Now, what low speed pre-ignition is, it's right in the name. So pre-ignition is an event where you're having an ignition event before ignition is supposed to happen. So normally in your engine, your piston's going up and down and you have your spark plug that fires and ignites the air fuel mix inside of your combustion chamber. And the goal is to have a nice controlled burn. So when the spark plug ignites, the heat is going to expand and you're going to build up combustion pressure. And the goal is when your piston is moving down, that combustion pressure is at its peak. So it can push the piston down as hard as possible. And that gives you the torque and the power that you feel coming out of your engine. But the issue with pre-ignition is you're basically having an uncontrolled ignition event before that's supposed to happen. So while the piston is still moving up, something inside of your cylinder can ignite and that pushes the piston against its natural rotation, which can cause engine knock or sometimes it's called super knock. So this is a big problem because when your engine is kind of moving with its rotation and it has the natural inertia, basically anything that pushes it in the wrong direction creates engine knock, which we all know can cause really big problems like piston damage. So that can be a result of LSPI. 
Now, the first part of it, low speed, is kind of the unique factor here because pre-ignition is something that can happen. You know, you can experience knock for a lot of different reasons, but the low speed aspect of it means that at low RPM, like below 2000 RPM is usually what I look at, even lower than that, you're going to be experiencing these really high combustion pressures. And that's again, because we've got turbos that make a lot of boost down low. And so you're creating a lot more combustion pressure in those low speed scenarios that you wouldn't experience on older engines. And that's kind of the phenomenon that we're trying to beat right now. And as usual, I forgot my prop. All right, so the biggest thing that you can do right now based on what the industry has found is making sure you're picking the right oil weight. And I know we all love talking about what oil is best for our cars, but in this case, there definitely is some data supporting that picking the right oil can reduce the chance of running into LSPI issues. So what does that mean? Well, your oil has more classifications than just weight. There are additional classifications that are applied by regulatory bodies to make sure that it meets certain requirements set by the OEM. So usually OEMs will put their own label on it if it meets their requirements, but there are also overarching requirements based on American standards as well as international regulatory bodies that put their stamp of approval if it meets the requirements for a specific classification. So long way to say you want to look for this, where is it? I just saw it. There it is. This API rating. So where it says API SP, that indicates that it meets the latest requirements that have been set by the API, which I believe is American Petroleum something. I'll put it up here on the screen. But they basically set the requirements to meet this classification SP, and that includes testing to make sure that it can avoid issues and circumstances that create LSPI. So this is something else that you can look for as you're considering different oil weights or different oil brands. Make sure it also meets the API SP requirement. Now, this test goes through a lot of different things. The newest one is for chain wear. So for the SP one, the newest test that they applied is making sure that you can reduce timing chain wear and that it meets their requirements for extended longevity of your engine. They also do the LSPI testing, which makes sure that you're not going to create scenarios where your engine oil can cause pre-ignition events and they've even updated their test requirements for multiple different things, including fuel economy, reduced oxidation, reduced low temp sludge. So when it's not up to temperature, it's not creating a lot of sludge in your engine and also valve train wear. So they've basically you know, increased the requirements to make it harder to pass these tests so that your oils are higher quality if they meet this API SP standard. Specifically for LSPI, they're also making sure that it has certain detergents. They're reducing some like calcium that seems to contribute to increased LSPI. And they're also increasing some detergents like magnesium that help avoid it. So again, a lot of different changes that you can see outside of just looking at the oil weight. Now, something to consider is that a lot of people don't like to listen to the BMW standards because they say you just pay for the BMW certification and you get it put on your oil. It doesn't really mean anything. Well, then you really won't like this one because it goes through the same thing that the BMW standards would be. You know, if a company wants to submit their oil for testing, they submit it for testing. They get approved for whatever classification it falls under, and that's the label that they put on their oil. Now, just because it doesn't have that certification on the oil, it doesn't mean that it doesn't meet the requirements. Sometimes it just means that they didn't submit it for certification. But I highly recommend finding one that does meet the certification just so you know for sure that it meets those requirements. And I actually have an example here because this is some 5W40 oil. I use this in my Volkswagens as well as my N52 BMW X5. So they use 5W40. They use, in here it has the Long Life 01 requirement that works on my 2010 X5. And it meets the API SP standard. And I was looking at this and I was really surprised because a couple of years ago, I had looked at the same 5W40 oil. It had only met the API SN requirement. But that was because the SP requirement only came out in 2020. So I actually have this old bottle that I need to send back to FCP Euro at some point. 
And I just checked it and I realized that at some point in the past couple of years, Liquid Molly sent that oil in, got it tested. Now it's also approved to meet the SP requirement and they updated the label to show that. So again, some oils can meet that requirement. They just don't have it on the label if it hasn't been tested and certified to meet those requirements. Now, something key here is that you can definitely experience pre-ignition due to oil because when oil gets hot enough, especially if it's in the combustion chamber and kind of in an oil vapor state, there is a possibility that it can ignite. So this is something where you wanna make sure one, your oil is up to temperature before you really beat on your car. If it's really cold, it can have more difficulty inside of your combustion chamber of actually being scraped off of your piston walls. So what that means is some of it can work its way past your piston rings into your combustion chamber and potentially ignite. So if you've got a cold engine and you're flooring it from low RPM, that is a circumstance that can create LSPI and cause engine damage. The other thing is just picking the right oil because the right oil, like I said, will have the right detergents in it that will avoid these issues. Also making sure your PCV system is up to snuff because if you've got a lot of blow by recirculating into your engine, going past your piston rings or getting you know sucked back into your intake, that's something that can also ignite. And if it's not burnt up in one ignition cycle, when your piston goes down and everything's still hot inside of your engine, your oil can combust and ignite when there's no ignition event in the plan. So that can also cause LSPI as well. And then the last thing is we're gonna fall back and talk about injectors because yes, direct injection engines tend to be more susceptible to LSPI. A part of this is because your fuel timing is extremely critical inside of your engine. And so now with your direct injection, you're basically adjusting your fuel timing. It's different than what a lot of older cars would experience where they ran richer and everything was less efficient. Now you've got kind of a smaller window where your fuel injector is spraying. But outside of those events, it's experiencing the same heat as your pistons, the same combustion pressures as your pistons. You know, it's really taking a beating when it's mounted directly inside of your cylinder. So if there's any damage to your injector, for example, if one of the holes on your injectors are clogged and it's not giving you a nice even distribution of fuel inside of your cylinder, it can create hot spots. And those hot spots can lead to pre-ignition, which would be LSPI. Also, if you're using low quality fuels, it can leave a lot of dirt inside of your injectors and that can create uneven fuel distribution, which can lead to LSPI. So sometimes people like to recommend fuel cleaner in those scenarios, which considering this, if you have low quality fuel, BMW even offers an OEM fuel detergent that you can use. Otherwise, there are plenty of options. I've used Lucas in some of my older cars and you run that through your fuel system just to make sure that everything's clean. I used to do it like every oil change just to flush out the system. Other things, of course, is just using high quality fuels because a lot of the top fuel companies like BP, Shell, even Costco have fuels that have the detergents already in it. So while you're driving, it's flushing out your fuel system. It's cleaning off carbon deposits inside your pistons and everything else that can cause LSPI. So just use high quality gas. That would be my recommendation. But if you're in an area that has low quality fuel and not a lot of options, fuel system cleaner is also a band-aid that you can use to compensate for that. And then the last thing and my favorite is just keep your RPMs up. Like in general, don't floor it at low RPM. I know it's kind of something that a lot of us like to do because we want to feel the torque as soon as we're leaving a green light. But just have some mechanical sympathy on your car. And if you're driving around, especially at higher speeds and higher gears, but your RPM is still low because your ZF8 wants to be in eighth gear at 50 miles an hour or whatever, just downshift before you have to accelerate. There's no reason to floor it when your car is at 1500 RPM. Those are the scenarios where you can lug your engine and create LSPI because it has to work so hard to overcome all of the losses that are inside of your drivetrain. So downshift, let your transmission and differential work for you to create that extra torque you're looking for. You'll accelerate more quickly, you'll have way more fun, and you'll protect your engine from risking an LSPI event. So yeah, hopefully this answers some questions that maybe you didn't even have and explains some things to give you a different frame of reference. I do think now talking about it and looking at some of the pictures and stuff that we associate with LSPI, this makes a lot more sense versus just saying, 
oh, my injector failed, washed out my cylinders, and blew up my engine all in five seconds. I don't think that's something that typically happens. It makes more sense to me that you might be running into an LSPI issue. This is something that can happen a lot over time, but it really only takes one catastrophic event for it to really cause some serious damage. So do your due diligence, use the right oil, use high quality fuel, and don't floor it when your car is at low RPM or when it's cold, and you should have a B58 that will last a very long time. But uh, yeah, I think that's it for this video. So thank you guys for watching, and I hope this helps. And if you have any other questions or comments, leave them down below.